Acting plays a big role in video games, voice acting in particular. Just as a stellar film performance can stir something in your soul and make you feel a range of emotions, a solid voice acting job can help bring a video game to life and lend a touch of humanity to what is, essentially, a bunch of polygons stuck together. Oh, it's you. You know her? It's been a long time. I've been really busy being dead. Unfortunately, you won't find any of those great performances here. Oh man! It's a shame too because some of the worst offenders are big name movie actors who have held their own on the silver screen. But voice acting is a different beast entirely, and not everyone can successfully lend their voice to a video game character. So, as we look forward to more games featuring Nolan North, Troy Baker, and Ashley Birch, keep watching to see which Hollywood stars fail to deliver in their video game voice roles. Matthew Perry, Fallout New Vegas. Let's get one thing straight, we love Matthew Perry, we love young, snarky Matthew Perry, we even love older, slightly puffier Matthew Perry. He played our favorite goofball, Chandler Bing, on Friends. He's an avid gamer, willing to risk life and limb, or at least use of his hands, in his quest for video game dominance. And he's a huge fan of the Fallout series of post-apocalyptic RPGs. What's not to love about this guy? Well, his voice acting. The answer is his voice acting. Like I said, baby, all Benny needs is a stealth boy and a bobby pin. Thanks in part to his rabid Fallout fandom, Perry managed to land a gig voicing antagonist Benny, head of the chairman in Fallout New Vegas. Unfortunately, his performance in the game isn't exactly the cat's pajamas. His voice, synonymous with Chandler Bing, just doesn't fit his gritty, smooth-talking character. He was just too iconic for his own good. The game was rigged from the start. Peter Dinklage, Destiny if you're new to the Destiny franchise, you may not know that the role of your Guardian's companion, Ghost, was originally held by Peter Dinklage, famous for his portrayal of Tyrion Lannister in HBO's Game of Thrones. And for being an especially angry children's book author in Will Ferrell's holiday comedy, Elf. Players had a lot of complaints with the first Destiny, and unfortunately, one of them was Dinklage's voice acting. He simply sounded bored most of the time, and his delivery didn't do a lot to inspire confidence. I wish you'd check with me before making insane promises. If we want to take down a Gatelord, we've got to find out how these machines operate. The player's character in Destiny didn't speak much, so Ghost was leaned on quite heavily to provide story beats. A lot of players felt that Dinklage failed to deliver, and so Destiny's already bad story felt even worse. They live all the way out at the edge of the darkness. Last place the light touches. Can't we just stay here with the murderous robots? Dinklage's run as Ghost was limited to the first year story campaign. Eventually, veteran video game voice actor Nolan North took over at the launch of the Taken King expansion, even re-recording all of Dinklage's dialogue. Michael Bean, Aliens, Colonial Marines Michael Bean is known for his role in the original Aliens, that's why he seemed like a natural fit when it came time to cast Aliens, Colonial Marines, a 2013 first-person shooter from Gearbox Software. Unfortunately, Aliens Colonial Marines ended up flopping hard. It promised too much and delivered too little, and Bean's reprisal of Corporal Hicks wasn't about to win any awards. No! No! His subpar performance in the game at least comes with an excuse, though. Bean told PC Gamer in 2013 that voicing his newly resurrected character just wasn't fun at all. Don't let one bad outing fool you, though. Bean isn't all that bad when he shows up in video games. He had a lot more fun voicing Rex Colt in Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon and turned in a way better performance as a result. And maybe, just maybe, that's because Far Cry 3 is a vastly superior game. I swore an oath to a special lady. Your wife? No. Lady Liberty. She taught me that winners don't use drugs. 50 Cent to Blood on the Sand. For those out of the loop, rapper 50 Cent, aka Curtis Jackson, has also starred in several movies, including Escape Plan, Den of Thieves, and even the drama All Things Fall Apart. He's got some acting chops, and he spent a whole lot of his life in a recording booth. You'd think that those two facts together would add up to a voice performance that is at least serviceable. <laughs> <laughs> no. Unfortunately, 50 Cent was not magic on the mic for his own video game, 50 Cent to Blood on the Sand. Nothing's impossible. You still send his men bulls? Next shipment is today. Good. He's gonna get an extra special delivery with that liquor. One reviewer called the voice acting in the game wonderfully atrocious, while another said voice acting seems pretty far outside of Mr. Cent's skill set 
to the point where he's not quite convincing playing himself. If you can't even play yourself, should you be voicing video games at all? It seems in 50 Cent's case, the answer is no. Christopher Walken, True Crime, Streets of LA what more can we say about the iconic Christopher Walken that hasn't already been said? He's earned legend status as a host on Saturday Night Live. He boasts a diverse filmography that ranges from Pulp Fiction to Wedding Crashers. He even managed to pull off a portrayal of Captain Hook in a live performance of Peter Pan. Walken's a master of the big screen, TV, and stage. Evidently, he's just not cut out for video games, though. Case in point, True Crime Streets of LA, in which he plays the character George. Christopher Walken basically has only one mode, Christopher Walken. He sounds the same and is essentially playing the same character regardless of where he shows up. He's able to pull this off in a few films he does because you're expecting it and you get Walken's physical acting to round out his predictable quirks. But in a video game character that doesn't look anything like Christopher Walken, his voice doesn't exactly work. If you were my boy and you didn't take this opportunity, I'd beat the living crap out of you. Then you said, sure, I'll take the opportunity. Mickey Rourke, Rogue Warrior If you see Mickey Rourke's name attached to a project, you can assume a couple of things. It's probably going to be violent, and there's probably going to be a lot of swearing. It was true for The Wrestler, it was true for The Expendables. Rourke even showered profanities galore in his 2009 BAFTA's acceptance speech. Uh, Darren Aronofsky gave me a second chance after f***ing up my career for 15 years. Uh... <laughs> So the 2009 first-person shooter Rogue Warrior wouldn't be a real Rourke project without a bit of colorful language. And colorful it truly is. In fact, we can't even show you a snippet of dialogue, it's that bad. We did, however, manage to snag a pretty accurate recreation of one of the game's tamer scenes. I'm an uptight Buster! Well, no one's gonna top that. All joking aside, Rourke's voice work in Rogue Warrior was pretty terrible, both in terms of vulgarity and dramatic quality. If you get a chance to play the game, well, first of all, don't, but if you lose a bet or something, prepare yourself for dialogue that inspired critiques like the following, which came courtesy of IGN. As far as sound goes, overwhelming attention was paid to Mickey Rourke's profanity lace commentary, which makes Marcinko seem like a Tourette's-afflicted soldier hopped up on adrenaline. Good luck.